Well, uh, I agree with uh, Shri's view about the stability of Saudi oil policy, and Argus uh, has for a long time uh, looked at that, and, and it is certain that Saudi Arabia will continue and, and will ensure that there's stability in that sense. However, the big change already came two months ago. So in a way, yes, it's stability, but over a huge change. Now, what can that change mean in the longer term? In the longer term, we're talking about market share. And Saudi Arabia, by not cutting production, decided to stay and keep producing 9.5 million barrels per day, instead of going to, let's say, about 8 million barrels per day, which they could have chosen to do to stabilize the market. Mm. But they could also choose to produce 12 or 12.5 million barrels per day to compensate for the drop in prices by increasing their revenue by a larger, exporting larger volumes. Mm. So if anything, in this time, yes, there are lots of questions about the Saudi succession, but in the middle of this earthquake that the oil market has gone through over the past two months, mm. I think there are more questions about whether the, the price could go even further down mm. because of that increased production if they decide to go down and that it's interesting how that, how that battle for market share is being played out here in Asia. I remember you telling me, Alejandro, that uh, China now imports more Iraqi and Iranian crude compared to what they took from Saudi Arabia previously. Indeed, in terms of market share, yes, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is among the top five suppliers to, to China, but it's definitely about that market share in China and in the, in the Asia Pacific market. So basically what the Saudis have done by lowering the price and by uh, questioning the long-term viability of the growth in US production is open up four million barrels per day which are there up for grabs, whether it's Middle Eastern producers led by Saudi Arabia which take that market share or, or whether they allow for the arbitrage of crude coming from the Atlantic Basin, from Latin America, from West Africa to continue to penetrate the Asian market. So Alejandro, if in fact Saudi Arabia does increase production, how big of a possibility is that? And what will that do for U.S.-Saudi relations, which are already, you know, not so great right now? Um, in, in terms of Saudi Arabia raising production, it would be clearly bearish for the market. Um, I think uh, President Obama in his State of the Union speech two days ago was very clear about uh, the U.S. not intervening in the, the market. So I don't think that at this stage when the market has taken such a strong dip, w w the, the Saudis are fundamentally looking at the relationship with the U.S. I think they're pretty much focused on their objective to preserve their market share and to hopefully ride out a period of sustained low prices for the next one or two years. Uh, Alejandro, in terms of geopolitical tensions broadly in the MENA region, how would you characterize them right now? Because a lot of people are telling me, watch Yemen, shares a contiguous border with Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have seen unrest there. We have seen a slow motion coup in effect uh, there. How serious is it and how serious would you say the geopolitics are broadly right now? Well, at a time of succession in Saudi Arabia, it becomes within the region, the geopolitics gain a lot more relevance because during the kingdom of, during the, the, the reign of Abdullah, we saw dramatic changes in the politics and the geopolitics of the region, starting, of course, with the Arab Spring. So there are lots of questions. This is the first succession that we see after the Arab, Arab Spring in Saudi Arabia. And, you know, the, 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 there are different, um, you know, with, with different interests within the region that can clash against each other. But again, I think that it's, it's better to focus on the actual economic reasons why Saudi Arabia is, 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 is doing this policy. Of course, if there wasn't a smooth transition, there could, and, and, and oil, Saudi oil production could be jeopardized for any reason, then of course prices would take a very severe reaction to the upside. But I don't think that's the mm. first scenario anybody's thinking about at the moment. Yeah.